What's going on YouTube? It's your friend Jess back at it again. I'm gonna talk about my favorite moments and my not so favorite moments. 8 p.m. Turn on USA. I've been so pumped for this day. The McMahons take the ring and they stop to smell the roses. Breaking glass, stone cold tear. Vince McMahon gulps with fear. Eight beers and three stunners. What a great start to the show. Then the crap begun, commercial one. My hopes and dreams were slayed. What have you done, Vince McMahon? Where's the action or fun? I'm done. It's time for Jesselmania 2. I wanted to do a special episode just for Raw 25th anniversary. Here we go. Seriously, what an amazing opener to the show. Stone Cold is one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. He can talk, he can wrestle, he can do it all. Him coming out and issuing a stunner to Shane, and then a stunner to Vince, and then another stunner to Shane. It is what we all wanted. It's what we all needed to see. Am I right? One of my favorite moments is during the women's tag match is Asuka throwing everybody out of the ring. Kind of foreshadowing to the women's Royal Rumble. Do I think she's gonna win the Rumble? Depends on whether or not Triple H puts Ronda Rousey in there or not. And honestly, if they put Ronda Rousey in the Rumble and she wins, I'm gonna be salty. I'm gonna be so salty. Another great moment, Teddy Long suit, snazzy. So they're introducing all of the old managers of WWE Raw, John Laurinaitis, Teddy Long, yada, yada, yada. Where was Vicky Guerrero? I was expecting her to be there. So then Daniel Bryan comes out and you know the pop that Daniel Bryan gets. And who interrupts him but The Miz, which is great. The Miz knows how to turn the heat on in the kitchen. You wanna turn the heat on? Interrupt Daniel Bryan. That's what you do. Good job, Miz. Then we go into the match between him and Roman Reigns. I tweeted and I begged and I pleaded and I wept. I wanted The Miz to win the Intercontinental Championship and he did. Eight time I see champion, The Miz. I was so glad to see The Miz win the title. Obviously this means we're gonna see a lot of people coming for him to get this title, whether it's Roman Reigns coming back to get it or somebody else in the roster coming up to him. I love seeing The Miz in a feud. The Miz, molto bene. Let's talk about the poker game with the APA and then they sprinkled in a little bit of legend here, a little bit of new guy here. Heath Slater. <laughs> Poor Heath Slater. His children are gonna starve. It was a great throwback to see Farouk and Bradshaw in the back, chomping on some cigars, playing some poker. And then who do I see? One of my favorite tag team wrestlers of all time, Christian doing the peep show. Christian was on stage for all of about three seconds talking, but I have to give this entire segment some credit. I have friends that are convincing me to come around to Jason Jordan. Now I do miss Dean Ambrose with all of my little fluttery heart. However, I see the turn happening and he's doing a good job with it. He's being so overbearing, so over the top, interrupting the right people. Not only did he interrupt Seth Rollins, what? Seth freaking Rollins? But he was kind of also interrupting Christian. Who needs to go in the Hall of Fame? Come on. WWE, get on it. Jason Jordan is also another person who is really good at creating some heat right now. I mean, he went to the kitchen, he turned up that flame, heat's on. Then who do we have come out and interrupt Jason Jordan? The bar. This part made me laugh a lot when Sheamus and Cesaro were like, oh, Kurt Angle doesn't suck. You suck, you suck, you suck, you suck. Telling Jason Jordan he sucks. Great job, made me laugh a lot. Another great moment in the 25th anniversary of Raw is Elias walking through the back and who do we see? Y2J, Chris Jericho, one of my top five favorite wrestlers of all time. Comes up to him, says he's got a song for him, plays the guitar, calls him a stupid idiot, and adds him and his stupid scarves to the list. That turned my frown upside down. Chris Jericho, he's just amazing. <laughs> then we cut back to the APA poker area behind the, the door, the freestanding fake door. Thank you guys for bringing that back. That's the type of humor that I really do miss. I'm an Attitude Hour baby all the way. I, 
I'm sure I sound like one of those wrestling fans. It's like, remember when? Remember when? Member Pyro? Member the puppies? First of all, Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase. What? Thank you. And then you've got other people sprinkled in. Dana Brooke caught Heath Slater cheating. Good statistician work, Dana. When Heath stood up and all the cards fell out of his shirt, I... Thank you. The ridiculosity. I needed it. Farouk and Bradshaw tell Heath Slater to get out. So him and Rhino leave through the fake door. <laughs> and who follows them but Titus O'Neil and Apollo Crews. So they have a match. Match was nothing special, but the shocking special twist is that Heath Slater and Rhino did not lose this match. No. No, they didn't. Because who came out? The Dudley Boys. One of the best tag teams. Period. The Dudley Boys came out, interrupted the match. Everybody, including Rhino, okay, throws Heath Slater into the ring. He gets whatzapped. And then he gets a 3D through the table. That was a great spot. That I loved. I, I laughed. It was really great to see the crowd pop that much for the Dudley Boys. Love them. Poor Heath Slater. His poor children. He's got kids. I think CPS is gonna come and take them away. I cried a couple times during this Raw 25th anniversary, as it won't surprise my friends who know I cry all the time. When AJ Styles called out Mean Gene to come and interview him in the back, I was so excited. And then I saw Mean Gene. And you guys know that scene in E.T. where E.T. is dying and he's turned all pale and skinny and crusty looking and Elliot is just losing his stuff, crying over it. That was me looking at Mean Gene. Oh, my heart barely could take it. But Mean Gene sounds exactly the same as he always has, which I thought was great. He has not lost his vocal touch. Fabulous. AJ Styles saying, let me tell you something, Mean Gene. I've always wanted to do that. I really liked that a lot. I know Hulk Hogan is a bit touchy. AJ Styles, I'm sure, is somebody who grew up as a kid watching Hulk Hogan, watching Macho Man Randy Savage, the Million Dollar Man, the list goes on. But being able to say that to Mean Gene is a big deal. So I'm glad that he was able to do that and kind of live out one of his dreams. Beautiful part of the night. The DX reunion. This is probably what I was most looking forward to. So therefore was where I was most disappointed. <laughs> First we have Triple H and Shawn Michaels coming out and they start reminiscing about the old days of DX. And I thought that that was hilarious. Every time Shawn wants to talk about something, Triple H is like, no, no, bro, we, we can't, we can't talk about that. No, we're, we're rated PG now, dude. Remember the time when, oh, dude, we're rated PG. But remember when we had those, dude, P. G. Why do we have to make it PG? Why are kids so sensitive? Oh, you didn't know? Well, you better call somebody! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, DX and the WWE proudly present to you your tag team champions of the world! The Road Dog, Jesse James! The Badass, Billy Gunn! The New Age Outlaws! I was verklempt to be able to say that again with Road Dog Jesse James. Thank you for bringing him back. The New Age Outlaws are also in my top, I have a lot of favorite tag teams, but they're up in my top five, period. Not only can they both wrestle, but by God, they're entertaining. The next pop comes out. I was so excited when they were all in the ring together. I was pumped to hear what they were gonna talk about. Shocked to hear Triple H call out the ninth wonder of the world, China. I mean, y'all know why. Now we've got the Balor Club coming out and everybody does a two sweet. It's a beautiful moment. I was really excited to see them in the ring with DX and I'm like, where is this going? And here's where it went. While there may have been some good, there was a lot of bad about Raw 25. Okay, feel free to disagree with me, but here are all my thoughts on the hot garbage mess that was Raw 25. I was so amped to see Jerry the King Lawler and Jim Ross commentating matches. Really, they, anything. They could have done a commercial, I would have been happy with that. But no, they stick them in the Manhattan Center, and I'll, I'll get to the people in the Manhattan Center in just a second. But they gave us no King and no JR. There was not nearly enough of them. Why didn't they just have this done in one venue? Oh my God, let, let's, let me talk about the venue. First of all, there was no reason to split it up into two different venues, none at all. What it did 
first of all, to the poor fans in the Manhattan Center, is gave them a crappy night, okay? They all threw their money basically in the trash. To what? See JR and King talk for four seconds? To what? See a match between Woken Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt that lasted two minutes? To see what? The DX reunion that... Ugh. I feel bad for anybody who paid good money to go to the Manhattan Center that night. You guys got nothing. You got absolutely nothing. WWE should refund you your money. Yes. Let's talk about what happened there first. The Undertaker comes out. I'm a huge Undertaker fan. I have been for probably the best part of 20 years, you guys. And what? He talks. Of course, the crowd interrupts him. Stop being disrespectful. Let the man talk, okay? I have a lot of thoughts about that. Moving on. Undertaker comes out, gives the lamest speech of his entire career, and then walks away. No promise of coming to Mania. No talk about being in the Rumble. Did he even roll his eyes backwards? I don't even remember seeing that. What, like, he walked out, went onto the ring, talked for a minute, and walked away. What the fudge? Personally, I didn't like that Christian got no time on the peep show. The peep show is all about Christian. Why was there no Christian? Does anybody else feel like they watched three hours of commercials? Non-stop commercials? Granted, I wanted to eat some Sonic, but still, why so many commercials? Was this USA trying to cash in on the Raw 25th anniversary? This was not even a show worth cashing in on, you guys. Not even remotely. What? Why were there so many commercials? My God. So first they had the opener with Stone Cold and McMahon's. That was great. Then we went into the women's match. By the time the women's match ended, okay, we were already in our third commercial break at 8.38 p.m. What? I wish that I had counted how many commercials there were during the show because it was ridiculous. Unacceptable. USA, if y'all did that to WWE, screw you. I said it. Come at me. What are you gonna do? God, why were there so many commercials? I'm gonna talk about the real drama, the real tea, let's spill it. Enzo, WTF, bro. What? All of you guys can Google this story for yourself. I'm not gonna go into detail on this channel because there are a lot of kids that watch this, but if y'all know what happened, what a piece of garbage. So Enzo was pulled from the show and then apparently today was officially released. Now, if these allegations are true, what a hot, piece of garbage you are, bro. You have millions of followers. You could probably get any girl you wanted that was a wrestling fan or at least a fan of you. What kind of scum of the earth, piece of trash, maggot breath, amoebas on flies on poop, old onion baby garbage, filled diapers. What kind of piece of trash are you, bro? Trash, ridiculous. You guys, overall, I just don't understand how this was an anniversary show of any kind. Why? Because you had some legends on there? It was great seeing the APA in the back. It was great seeing Sexual Chocolate, Mark Henry, and The Godfather, and Brother Love. Okay, there was a great scene on Twitter that I saw between The New Day and Boogeyman, where New Day gives Boogeyman bootios and he eats them, and then he gives Xavier Woods worms and he eats them. I almost vomited. <laughs> Why was the best content of the night on Twitter and not on the dang show? Like, what is that? What? It just wasn't an anniversary quality show at all. Like, not even remotely. This wasn't even, I'm, I'm losing words. I have no words for just how disappointed and devastated I was by this. I was looking forward to this show for weeks. They gave us so much foreplay. Raw 25, Raw 25th anniversary, Raw 25th anniversary, Raw 25. And then this is the garbage they deliver to me? It's like saying you're gonna get a pizza from a good pizzeria in the neighborhood and then all of a sudden Domino's shows up on your door. It's okay if it's midnight and you don't have your faculties about you and you just need to get something greasy in your mouth. I'm sure that's fine. This is not what we signed up for and I am upset. I said I cried like three times during this and that's a fact. I cried. Number one at the prospect of Daniel Bryan coming to the Royal Rumble because that fills my heart with joy. I cried when I saw Mean Gene Okerlund and him just looking older and decrepit, but I still love him and I still, I feel like we still got a good segment out of him from the back with AJ Styles. That was great. But my last set of tears, everyone, came at the end of the show when I couldn't believe that there was nothing to save the show. Nothing. They could have had Stone Cold come back out. They could have had Chris Jericho come back. I mean, they could have done anything other than end it with that four second match with Braun Strowman, Kane, and Brock Lesnar. Paul Heyman was literally the best 
part of the last five minutes of this show. What were you doing? Was it the writers? Are there just not enough people who wanted to sign up for this? Look, I know that Bret Hart had to back out due to hand surgery, and we know that Mick Foley dropped out due to cave babe reasons, but you... <sighs> Let's talk about DX. And if you don't like what I have to say, then I got two words for you. Listen anyway. I expected a lot more. Now, I know that we are in the realm of PG WWE, okay? I get it. But they come out, mostly Triple H talks. There seemed to be just no camaraderie between any of them at all. It was almost like they were three separate groups, right? You had Triple H and HBK, New Age Outlaws, and X-Pac. When the Balor Club came out, I got excited and I thought, here we go, something good's gonna happen. But no, they're interrupted by the revival? What? What are you? I want my mommy. Why was this so terrible? The one good thing about the revival being out there, okay, is that everybody got their finishing moves off on them. That's literally it. The match between the revival and Gallows and Anderson was lame. And they obviously had to cut all the end matches short because of all the dang commercial breaks we had. So that's why the last couple of matches of the night, AKA Gallows and Anderson versus the revival and Braun, Lesnar, and Kane were less than two minutes apiece because they had no time left and they were running over to 11.15. WWE WTF. USA WTF. What? LOL. For me, the biggest travesty of the evening was that Goldust was barely in this show. Why is this? Why didn't they have him interact more with some of the older wrestlers? Why wasn't he back there playing poker with the APA? I'm really at a loss for words, you guys. Am I crazy? Am I the only one who feels this way? I need to know. Let me know down in the comments below. I would greatly appreciate starting a topic of conversation about this. If you want, feel free to message me on Facebook or the Twitter machine. I would appreciate that as well. Handles, no. The biggest travesty of the night was the Manhattan Center, period. We saw three spots. Three, The Undertaker came out and talked for five seconds. There was a five second match between Broken Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt, and then that BS at the end with DX. I wanna know, I'm curious, if you went to that show, how much did you pay for your tickets and are you asking for your money back? I hope they at least gave out free beer or free pizza or autographs. I mean, literally anything to compensate for your time and your money being there and not seeing a dang thing. Useless. <sighs> If you guys think I'm joking about the crying, I'm not. I literally cried when this ended, asking my husband, did they really just do this to us? They're not even gonna bring anybody out during the last few seconds to save this show? <laughs> if you guys don't agree with what I had to say, then I got two words for you. What were your thoughts on this whole Raw 25th anniversary show? Let me know in the comments down below or you can hit me up on the Twitter machine, whatever you prefer. I hope you found this enjoyable in some way. I hope you at least had fun and I will see all you Ultimate Warriors next time. Bye.